Are we live? We live. Yeah. Okay, so I ain't gonna curse. But these. All right, man. So listen, we got another trapologist video. You feel me? I like his videos. They're very informative. Teaches me some things. So let's go ahead and watch it, man. You know, if you do decide to leave the streets, it doesn't make you lame. It doesn't make you a. So thing is leaving the streets, though. You feel right, that, that people want to kill FBG you? Duck. Mm -hmm. Does that does that go through your mind pretty much every day when you wake up? Every day, all sleep? day. I'm a very disrespectful person. I know what I did in my lifetime. One interviewer warned a rapper to change his actions, and another foreshadowed his death in an interview. These are rappers' most disturbing last interviews. First, we have to start with the Chicago rapper Bloodhound Lil Jeff, because Jeff was just starting to get a buzz in the city and was growing insanely fast. Fans on the Chiracology Reddit were even talking about Jeff nonstop, since they were comparing him to the next King Von. It's rumored that Lil Jeff allegedly had 10 bodies, because Jeff would even hint at having bodies on his Instagram. I'm taking the killing school. Class Boy. start next week. You gotta at least have like you gotta at least have two bodies though. For I ain't coming with no. Bro, I really just I just don't get how dudes be killing somebody on live and then just talk about it. Yeah, bro. Just pop, bro. He tripping. He tweaking. Like, what? That is insane, bro. Well, no, if you ain't got I can't work with no beginners, folks. <laughs> you got at least have a, you got at least have a two. I'm going to give y'all two minimum. A two. I'm going to start at two minimum because y'all know why I'm going to start at two minimum. Two bodies. Now, I'm just doing it for, for a tradition. And whatever I say, do it. If you do anything scary, I'm smoking your ass. Since Jeff was going crazy, interviewers wanted to get up with him since he was buzzing in the city. So one day, DJ UTV invited Lil Jeff and the other bloodhounds on his platform to do an interview. DJ U asked Jeff about the video where he said he's training people to be killers and tells Jeff that doing that isn't smart. It's not a bright future by doing that since it's only two places that could lead. And Jeff felt some type of way since he thought differently about it. If a, if, if a student graduates from this school, their future probably not looking too bright what what you trying to say i'm saying there's only two places so they can end up be that dumb bright. bro i mean i don't know if you See graduated from I'm the saying? school or not i don't i don't know it's like oh man just look yeah. is my future looking bright or not but i'm just saying if you graduate oh from a killer God. school no no you're a rapper so your your future looks very bright yeah until he does dumb stuff like this bro until he does dumb things like this i'm taking y'all to killing school you gotta have two bodies minimum. That's the requirements to to get accepted to this school. But he's a rapper. His future could 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 have been bright because obviously he's not here anymore. But I really don't understand how you get money, get success, and then well, he probably he was doing this before. But like you do all this, get the success for what? To get killed or go to jail? Literally doesn't make sense, bro. But but if a young man go to a killing school, you know, become a rapper and have a bright future. See, there you go, bank up money and be well. Exactly, he could do a lot. DJ U then asks Jeff how Ignorance, he is getting bro. all his jewelry and stuff, since Jeff has tons of jewelry but hasn't made much from rapping yet. And Jeff lets him know off hitting licks and stuff. Where you be getting all these fly watches Please. from? Suck that sweet. Okay. Three ninety nine. So yeah, he be giving them to me, really. They just be letting them keep them tight. I like put them on. I can keep them. Baby friendly is here. Word. I see. He's still on hey, your let wrist, me right? Have him, bro. I got my own. Well, it was like it's both eyes. <laughs> and then we got another one. And then it's another one, but it's not here right now. One of the other guys got that. And then you know we got. Man, you know man, you be seeing that chains all day yeah. like a slave. Yeah. DJ U tries warning Lil Jeff that he needs to tighten up and change his life. He knows that all of the rumors that he is hearing he aren't just coming out of nowhere listen, and are likely bro. to be true. Since DJ U didn't see a bright future for Jeff. And hey, y'all gotta chill on all that. Nah, man. I know y'all grown. I ain't y'all daddy. But I ain't even finna sit here and act like that cool. Hurry up in the aisle. Y'all gotta, you know, you know. You a real for that. Just tighten up a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Like, he tighten on for sure. Hey, no, nah, for they real, little you, Jeff. You hear me? Because you got a lot of potential, bro. I'm tight on. What you, I'm not loose out here, bro. I got my together, man. You just hit bad 
And it sounds like you believe in it, bro. Man, cuz. Hey, look, I used to DJ for Vaughn, yeah, right? The people right. With and they used to say all type of crazy about him. See what I'm saying? So you should be used to this. All that is true. <laughs> but it's like Jeff wasn't really hearing what DJU was saying. Later in the interview, they started talking about karma because that's when DJU tries to let Jeff know that the energy that he's putting out might end up catching up to him. But Jeff let DJU know he doesn't believe in karma or bad luck. Negative energy upon yourself. Nah. Like the negative, like the energy you putting out, like onto the internet and stuff. Don't you think Hell that? Nah. Okay. I don't believe it. like that no bad luck and karma and dumb shit. That's not real. Then, a few weeks after the interview with DJU, things caught up to Lil Jeff. On June 8th, 2024, Lil Jeff was back in Chicago in his ops territory. And happened. video footage showed the incident because Jeff was on a drill trying to take out one of his ops. In the video, Jeff can be seen shooting at someone and chasing them into a house. When out of nowhere, someone within the house returned fire and ended up hitting Lil Jeff in the chest. Then, not long after Jeff died, his ops would go online making fun of him and celebrating since Jeff got killed while trying to kill someone. Hey, okay, please. Please, please. Bro, it's not even funny though. Like, niggas be laughing. Like, I'm not saying dude was uh, good or anything, but I'm saying like anybody dying, bro. It's just that's not that's not cool to like laugh about. Get on live and laugh about it. Like, it's not that's not. Oh yeah, he did it. Yeah, like no, bro. That's that's weird, dude. That's really, it's really demonic. I'm not even gonna lie, it's really demonic. He taught that brain. And Jeff, maybe he should have taken bro. DJU's advice since he already knew how things would play out for him. But Lil Jeff isn't the only rapper from Chicago to whom an interviewer tried giving warnings. The same happened with FBG Duck. One day, Duck was doing an interview with DJ Vlad. During the interview, Duck talked about getting shot twice on two separate occasions while being in Chicago. Well, where did you get shot both times? In the ankle and in the cab. In the same leg, in my left leg. When I got shot the second time, no, when I got shot the first time, I went to a party as soon as I got out the hospital. I went to the hospital, they wrapped my leg up, went to Lil J party. Later in the interview, Vlad asked Duck why he wouldn't move out of Chicago, especially after getting shot more than once, since his ops were really out to get him. But Duck tells him, Why stay in Chicago when these types of shootings are happening? See, what it is with me, like, I got more in Chicago probably than they got more in Chicago. Like, that I got to make sure I take care of here first before I do anything. You can die anyway. You can get shot anyway. You feel me? But it's just like, in Chicago, I know better. You feel me? Like, I know what to do and what don't to do. And what, what don't not to do. do. You feel me? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And it's like, now nah, how I move Glad around. we corrected that one. I'm safe, you feel me? Duck then lets Vlad know that half of the big rappers from Chicago moved from Chicago because they're scary. And he isn't so scary, so there's no point in moving if he's not scared. Like, them is real rappers. You feel me? Like, them scared. It ain't because they got money and move. A lot of people tell you it's because I got money. I'm rich. Why I gotta be in Chicago? No, you're scared. You want these songs rapping, but you really scared. That's why you got the out of Chicago, because you're Later in the interview, Duck talks about how he feels and knows that people want to smoke him. And he thinks about that every day, all day. You feel that, that people want to kill you? Mm-hmm. Does that, does that go through your mind pretty much every day when you wake up? And every day, all sleep? day. Every day, all day. It changed how I moved. It would have been good if Duck had taken Vlad's advice and moved out of Chicago because Duck was dissing dead ops it and still in the city. Unlike Dirk and move. some of the other rappers who were dissing dead ops. Boy, so Duck had a lot of attention on him and really had to watch how he moved. But in August 2020, Duck decided to go out shopping with his girlfriend in a rich neighborhood called Gold Coast. He always talked about moving smart and staying safe in the streets since he knows how to move around Chicago. And Gold Coast definitely isn't the place you'd expect to see a shooting. But after Oblock got the drop on him, six of them hopped in two cars and rushed across town to catch him. When they spotted Duck, they jumped out of the V's and it was on sight. Duck tragically died from getting hit in the chest and neck. Everyone suspected Oblock as soon as it happened. 
And in 2021, C Thang, C Murder, Muwap, Los, and Zell Money all got hit with a RICO case over it. And in April 2023, a sixth O Block affiliate named TZ got booked for the shooting too. According to a witness who had talked to the cops, Vine, sure. Vine dropped a 100K bounty on Duck's head since he really wanted to get him gone. And it sucks that Vlad tried warning Duck to move from Chicago, but Duck didn't feel like anything could happen to him down there. But now, let's move on to a rapper from Philly known as Fat G's. One day, Fat was doing an interview with Philly first. 48. And during the interview, Fab was talking about how he's insanely deep in the streets and can't leave the streets. And how it's hard to squash beef because Fat lets the interviewers know that beef can't be squashed no matter what. Squash the beef or something. These in this bro. Like in this They can't squash it if they wanted to, bro. It's just deeper than anything, bro. You feel what I'm saying, bro? Like this is me. Like <laughs> you feel what I'm saying, bro? Played basketball. You had career or anything, bro. They, they took your homie out and then you got to drop everything and, and react or be a one of the hosts named Che was trying to school fat and let fat know that it doesn't have to be like that and you have to mature and learn how to let things go but G's wasn't trying to hear what the host was saying but yeah but I'm exactly I, 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 like, I, I, what can you I'm tell a, like I'm if, tell if, you kill your homie that you with every day y'all smiling this making you laugh tears bro the I'm gonna tell you like, you feel me I'm gonna tell you what you say you feel me bro that it, it come with maturity because at the end of the day, it come with maturity listen, when you get yeah, right, that's you it don't tell you. come Go with ahead. maturity when they kill when they don't got no sense to the murder. No. We, so if shoot your homie dead through the door, bro, on some and kill your homie, that don't got nothing to do with maturity, bro. When I'm 18, like I certain listen, situations don't got nothing to do with listen, maturity. Listen, no, when I'm 18, I'm going right back and we don't even matter. I'm ready to die. I'm 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 a, uh, an Iron Man. I'm Superman yeah, no, for out sure. here. Yeah. At 32 with a kid, yeah, that's two kids. You just gonna nothing, move different. Nothing, you gonna nothing. still handle that. Jay then lets Fat know that none of the guys out here killing are doing good. And what's the goal of being a gangster? However, all them killers, out of all of them, what percentage of them is doing good? We never said that. No, so then what's the real goal to be a gangster? Nothing. Yeah, because killing, that's easy. Yeah. That's easy. But, like, but, but that's what, that come over time. You know how easy it is? To pull a trigger, like, like but, but, no, but, on, but listen, coolness don't got nothing to do with, no, like, with, cool. with, with get accepted. back. And Fat G's would end up losing his life after this interview in a very crazy way. On March 17th, 2024, Fat was posted outside yeah. of his mom's house until he noticed someone odd in his ring camera. So he went up to talk and ask who they were, since he didn't want a shooting to go down at his crib. Oh, what's wrong with you? Hey, now, knock through this door and ask you who you looking for. Go ahead. He just told me to go ahead. Fat then lets whoever he's on the phone with know that he's about to flame the dude's car since he didn't know who it was parked on the block. In front of my door, I'm about to flame. Like, I'm about to flame this car right now. I don't know what's up with cuz. Not long after, Fat kept talking to the dude in the car. And I guess he took offense to Fat saying that he was about to flame his car up. So the driver eventually upped his fire on Fat and let off several shots, ending his life. Huh? Bro, somebody shut the door. Bro, are you listening to what I'm saying, bro? Somebody hit my crib up bro. You sit in the front of my crib, bro. Hit his crib up. Yo. What is wrong with him? He called me. Video is very disturbing and hey, unfortunate. Is he, on, is he on the ground? What is wrong with him? He called me. Dang, bro, he laying on the ground. Video is very disturbing, and unfortunately, Fat lost his life this way. And many people say Fat G's messed up by saying he would flame the dude's car up. Others say he made a huge mistake by walking up to the guy's car. And it's crazy because yeah. the interviewer also warned Fat G's Especially about being more mature and you. letting things go. Now, let's move on to PNB Rock, because in an interview, he talks about a situation in which he almost got robbed and killed in LA one time. And the sad thing is, he actually ended up losing his life this way, too. Rock and academics were talking, and academics talked about how LA has always felt spooky to him. While they were on that topic, Rock told him a story that he went through the first time he was in LA. Always felt a little spooky to me. And just tell me, and, and it's fine. You tell me if, if, if it's just me. But like just, no. <laughs> LA, I think I think because we, 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 LA is synonymous with the death of Biggie, death of Pac. Yeah. Um, and it's, I think it's just so much where like, might be like ganged up other places, but I've never seen, yo, gang culture over there. Serious, Crazy. I ain't gonna lie. I went through 
Yeah, when I first first like was having in LA with some some Grape Street. It's this day, you feel me? Uh, Oti Grito and them. Yeah, yeah. You feel me? They try to do some type. But they seen that I wasn't on it. Rock then lets academics know how they tried testing him since the goons wanted him to come to his hood. Tried to test me like on some test. Shit. Like, yeah. they was just like, yeah, come to the hood. You feel me? Like, come oh, up to the, to the hood. I went to their hood. You, you feel me? With all, with strapped up. You feel me? Like, I went to <laughs> Like, it was like three of us. And we wasn't crazy Why? deep. Because I just be wanting to know, like, <laughs> like, yo, I'm, I'm just like, yo, bro. You feel me? Like, I'm just like you. I came from the trenches. But that isn't the only time PNB Rock had some problems while in LA. Because he talks to academics about another time Goons tried him while he was with his family. Like mid pandemic. But it was Why like they another so one. Of, I don't know. I guess because it'd be sweet. You feel me? They just be with my family. They think I'm just out here lacking. You know what I'm saying? So it would be one of those type of situations. Just talking loud shit. Wanting me to hear their conversation. And it's like, I'm with my peoples. Like, I'm with my, my, my daughter and my girl. Like, why are they talking about this? Like, this one, like, we outside, we on Fairfax. I'm like, man, you know, I already peed the blitz. We this out. This gangsta's out there on Fairfax? Like, like that's what I'm that? saying. What's going on? Like, I'm on Fairfax right now. <laughs> so I'm like, man. My bad, I'm checking the time. I got a meeting in about 20 minutes. Man, we uh, out of here. You feel me? Like, we gone. My girl, like, no, nah, we ain't. I'm like, I'm just going off of the vibes. Like, we And it sucks that PNB Rock didn't take note of the times he's been run up on in LA and started moving differently when he was out there. Because on September 12th, 2022, PNB Rock took his girlfriend to Roscoe's Chicken and Waffles in LA. His girl posted a picture on IG tagging their location, and at around 1 20 p.m., someone walked up to rob him. The police say the victim, along with the female witness, were in the eating area at a restaurant when they were approached by at least one suspect who had a firearm and demanded property from the victim. And another dude started letting off shots and snatched PNB Rock's jewelry and ran off. I, I can't remember, did the girl get shot though? Did the girl get shot as well? I can't remember if that happened. But yeah, bro, uh, she gave a lo She put a location where they was at, knowing that he got, almost got robbed before in LA and then she put a location out. I don't know if that's like, if that was a setup or not. I really don't. Oh shit, I tried to press, uh, and off. After the situation hit the internet, many people blamed PNB Rock's baby mama for posting the location. But Cardi B made a tweet saying, I, would I highly doubt was looking at PNB's baby mama IG. He was in a bad location and people stay outside plotting. It sucks that PNB Rock didn't start moving differently or hire a security guard while he was in LA after the two first times that he had crazy situations down there, since it seems like they were out to get rock bad out there. But now, let's move on to 051 Melly. Even though Melly never dropped a song, he's huge in the Chicago drill scene for some of the things that he's done, similar to female assassin KI. So Melly was getting interviewed just like the rappers since he was around rappers and doing crazy Crazy things in the streets. And one day, Zach TV pulled up on Melly and Mubu Crump. During the interview, Melly talks about taking a chain at a party and doing all types of crazy, slimy things during parties in Chicago. Nothing. I took you by myself. One day, section by myself and took me. They was outside. I was in there by myself. By yourself? Yeah, he lied on his interview. He said we was bros. We had a fight in the hallway. Are you? Yeah. <laughs> 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 he just came in the party, I knew who he was. Pass it to the gang, now we share it. <laughs> That's crazy, man. Melly was doing all types of things in the streets of Chicago, and he had a reputation for being one of the most feared gang members in the city. But all that would catch up to Melly, and he ended up dying at a party, which is the crazy part, since he was always doing crazy things at parties. One day, THF Bezu called Melly lacking at a house party with his friend Mubu Crump. The two were standing in the front yard when a car rolled by and shot them both. Crump was killed while Melly miraculously survived. And this wasn't the first shooting that he survived either. So that's twice that Melly survived headshots. But that didn't stop him from getting back in the streets shot. and attending parties. Surviving two back-to-back -back shootings helped Melly's reputation in the streets. And it was only a matter of time because he got right back into action. Because 051 would lose a member named Bankroll Q. Melly would be the one to get payback and would slide on the two ops who were thought to be responsible. But Melly's thirst for revenge couldn't be satisfied and he just kept racking up bodies on top of bodies. Melly had gotten close with a set call 
called Gyro City. Not too long after How getting close to them, one of his homies from Gyro City, named Motor, was killed. This made Melly even more reckless. His reputation in the streets made him a little too comfortable. And Melly ended up getting into it with a dude named 007 Nate from Taekwon World over a dice game. Melly responded by shooting up Nate's crib while his baby mama and newborn child were inside. No one was hit, but Nate wanted revenge. And in September 2019, Melly was attending another party. And it seems like Melly had the worst luck when at parties. FBG and Gyro City were throwing the party. Melly pulled up to the party since he was cool with both gangs. But they warned him that some of his ops from TW may be there. Melly must have felt untouchable because he pulled up anyway, knowing that there will be problems. 007 Nate ends up catching Melly lacking and shoots him in front of everyone. This time, Melly would not be as lucky and died that night. And it seems like Melly should... One thing I will never do again again is go to a random house party that somebody put a flyer up on instagram for never will i bro no no unless it's something like family and we got a party situation cool but any flyer i see up be wild be bring your own bottle whatever no you will not you will not you will not catch me in that area i will not be in that uh proximity you feel me i'll be out the way at the crib where i am right now no. He should have learned his lesson after attending parties, after the first few incidents he had while attending them. Now, let's move on to Fulio, because his last two interviews are also pretty disturbing, as the interviewers gave him many warning signs. Fulio has been in multiple shootouts, and each shooting seemed to be worse than the last, because the first shooting happened when Fulio was in school. On the first day of school, someone from the op hood got killed waiting for the bus, and Fulio started dissing them all over social media. A lot of people thought Fulio had something to do with the hit, and he ended ended up getting into a fight over it. But after the last bell rang, things took a crazy turn. Fulio hopped on the bus, but the ops were following him. And while he was walking down the street, someone started hitting him and his homie. A bullet hit Fulio in the leg and knocked his hip out of place. So he had to crawl away while the shooter was still sending shots. Fulio made it out of this situation alive, but that wasn't the only time he was involved in a shooting. In November 2021, two shooters caught Fulio outside the studio and let off over 100 shots. Fulio told DJ Academics, I walk out the studio, I'm walking down like the carport to my car. I all, anytime I walk anywhere, I got my gun in my hand, walking well in Jacksonville. Like, that's just how you gotta be. Time you have it in your hand or you have it on your person? In my hand. I'm walking out the studio, it's in my hand already. Like, I, I, could, I like that you know PlayStation thing. Right like, there. when I walk, I could just feel it in the air, something finna happen. Like, I swear to God, like, I just. I don't know why. Is, it, is that paranoia? I don't, I don't think. Is that how everybody moving it, forward? I don't even know if it's paranoia. I don't know what it was. I just felt the hell stand up on the back of my neck. Mm. After the shooting, Fulio hopped on IG and spoke on the situation. I my whole clip on my dad. Stop playing. And I didn't get hit. I got grazed in the leg. Stop playing. I'm I got my whole clip. And whoever the was, y'all played. Y'all put the run down. Like y'all was supposed to get up on something. But that return fire. Yeah, see, I remember I react to the Julio Filio video. This is a clip in there. Bro, why are you mocking people that tried to kill you? Like, y'all supposed to really run down and get me. Like, bro got a death wish, bro. People be having a death wish. That's just, I don't get it at all. I am up. That'll get me off you. I'm gay. I'm about that bit like the Jacksonville Wolverine. One hand on glitz, other hand on trip. <laughs> After fans saw what he posted, they started to assume Fulio was up to no good since he ran to Instagram about the situation. So hours later, he went live, clearing everything up. On trading my gun and register, I shot back in self-defense. Y'all dumb. I shot back in self-defense. You don't yeah, think I anybody this. did something illegal? I saw this already. It's another video, so I don't really want to keep holding on to it, bro. Hold up, I want to see the interview, though. In an interview with Say Cheese, Fulio spoke a little about the most recent shooting where he got hit in the foot. I saw a little jump to the car, but by the time I got to the stop sign, they hopped out and went to shoot. They shot the car. Then I just went to hit and I went to drive. Then you're by yourself. Oh, yeah, I would do a little. I would do a little. Man, you can see like. Then the, do you think they noticed the car or. You can see like the, the, the lostness, if that's how you say it, in his eyes, bro. Like how you look how you just staring. It's like there's I don't wanna say you ain't got no soul, but it, it just seems like there's nothing there, bro. There's nothing there. That's what I see, bro. That's or just when my you went into the store, observation. They bro. seen you. 
Now I ain't even never make it to the store. Sean advises Fulio that he should get out of Jacksonville due to everything he's been through. You know if you do decide to leave the streets, it doesn't make you lame. It doesn't make you a You already got your stripes. You're already hated. You already got a street reputation. You, I mean, you you already got the, the, the rep, bro. So if you decide to leave the streets, it doesn't make bro. You already, you know, sometimes it's time to mature, bro, and, and, and do different things. Yeah, I feel like ain't no such thing as leaving the streets, though. I see people leave the streets all the time and change their life around. Look at Wallo. Sean really wanted Fulio to get out of the streets since he could see that nothing good was going to come from it and he should move out of town and go all in on rap. But I feel like if you were to move out of town, uh, you know, move out of town and, and, and just pursue your career, I feel like, I mean, your ops, I don't really know all of your ops specifically, but a lot of your ops can't afford to travel uh, and meet you in LA or uh, in, I don't I don't know yeah, anywhere no New York eye, uh, maybe Miami because that's still Florida but I feel like um, you relocating and and, and, and and I feel like you'll have a way better you'll have way better energy way better you could focus on it better but John Cotton wasn't the only interviewer who tried giving Fulio that advice after he got shot in the foot and he went on no jumper after the situation too and Adam told Fulio that he should get out of Florida but Fulio lets Adam know that he knows the city and is comfortable there so he doesn't plan on leaving you back out there now or like I don't stay I don't stand just but I just beat up like you know what I'm saying? I don't know if I don't sit think about the guys what it be I just be in Jasper I don't gotta beat up I just beat up I interview drill rappers all the time that tell me that they moved out of their home state, but then they seem like they just can't leave it alone and yeah. they just end up back there. Is that it's kind of how it is with you that you, you try to get away from other? Shit, but I ain't gonna count, bro. When I've been Atlanta, it's just like I don't know Atlanta, bro. Later in the interview, Julio talks about getting signs that he wasn't supposed to be in Florida around the time he got shot in the foot. In Jacksonville for for how long? I was down that too long this time, like. Parlaying, like chilling, chilling. I'm here, like, you know what I'm saying? This is what it is. Like, I'm on board. I kept getting signs. I went and pulled the beat out. Like, it kept happening. Like, police pulling me over. You get Mother shot. Then they send me, you know what I'm saying? Like, you too accessible. You fool, you'll get the fuck on, you know what I'm saying? But I'm, I'm just chilling. That's what I'm telling. Like, I'm chilling, bro. I'm scared. What happened to me? And that's how to know. I mean, having, like, the big kid. And it's crazy that Fulio didn't follow the signs and it would end up costing him his life in the next shooting that he was involved in. Because on June 23rd, Fulio was out to celebrate his birthday. He let every- Yeah, he was enjoying his birthday and everything. And then bro was, bro got got at the hotel, bro. But yeah, man, that's the video. Time is, yeah, I got a meeting in a few minutes. So I gotta go ahead and do that, man. I'll catch y'all next time, bro. My nigga. <laughs>